Welcome to Tips and Tricks, Mount and Blade, Warband and all other mods. Today I just want to show you several things I found out about this game on a special request in one of my videos. And so, let's start. For beginners, what is there to know? First of all, always remember you are the main part of the army. Everyone can go down, you not. Because if you go down, your army just loses control and will do whatever they can to charge the enemy directly. Furthermore, the chance is higher that you are, as you are the main skill bearer, that uh, your army will take more damage, have more deaths and will lose more likely than when you are active. I'll take a mail. The differences between the choices can be found out by... Um, the internet. You can go to the forum or you can go to uh, Mountain Blade Wiki. There is a Mountain Blade Wiki for nearly every mod. If it's a Floris mod, if it's Prophecy of Pandor, if it's Sports of Damocles, all great mods and there are many many more. They all have their own sites and there's always explained what these choices mean. I'll just take the ones that I think that are useful for us. Um, very important is Take uh, the bonuses for one that you need and second take the stats primarily on what uh, the choices on what bonuses you get to your attributes. You only get one attribute point per level so take the maximum combination of attribute points you can get when taking this. So. This time I play with saving so I can show you more things. So, about attributes. Always put your starting attribute stench at 10. That's very important because without it you can't use most of the weapons and armor you'll need to use. Furthermore, your charisma should be a little bit higher as you need trading later on and as you need for most leadership later on. Trade can do other people, but leadership you must do. So, agility is important, but not as important as strength and intelligence and charisma. You are the leader, so charisma is very important for you. Intelligence gives you more skill points as you are a leader, and as you have a lot of skills you can bring in, intelligence is also very important. So, Strange must not be at 30, it must not even be on 18. 12, maybe 50 is just enough. Agility, 10 is good, 12 is better, but more is not needed for starting or in the middle game. Intelligence, make it higher if you can, but always keep in mind, charisma is the stat that keeps your army running and keeps your people paid and makes your army big and strong. What else do we need? We are the leader, so we need leadership. We already have this in maximum. Maximum is always the corresponding base attribute distributed to 3. So if we want to get this to a 9, we'll have to invest 3 more points here. So what else do we take? We take prison management, as we can make a lot of pri money out of prisoners. We'll take power strike, so that we can take people down. We take shield very important because um, our shield is our second best friend our best friend I will show you in a second and we'll take one point in inventory management because this will give us the ability to take more items with us so in my opinion the number or the skills are important in the following order most important leadership second important power strike. Third important riding. Fifth important training. Never forget you can train your army and later on you will be the highest character in your army regarding well on the mod but in most cases. So your trainer skill should be high so that you can give the others experience. Very important is surgery as it keeps your people from dying but you can give that to one of your heroes. Persuasion is nice, first aid round treatment, others can learn. 
spotting, pathfinding, tactics, tracking, looting, all skills that other people can take. Horse archery, trust me, riding and shooting at people is very, very hard. And this just reduces the penalty on your damage and your accuracy. It does not actually help you hitting someone. Athletics, good if you lose your horse. If you lose your horse, you're dead meat anyway. Shield, it protects you, second best friend. Horse is your best. Power draw, nice for those who can use bows. Power throw, there are very few people who can do interesting things with uh, thrown weapons, but there are. Power strike, very important. You are the fighter, you must be alive, and to keep alive, well, the secret is kill the other guy before you die. Iron flash, that's nice, but two more hit points. They are useful, but we have... 30, uh, 34, and if we get a hit to the head, it does not make a matter if we have 50 or 34. So, we put our b skills in crossbows. You'll see later on why. Every one of these weapons, except throwing, may be very useful later on. So, our face is not interesting. Um, as this is um, just uh, showing, I start from the Kingdom of Sweden. To the fighting. Always remember the following, movement is king, as long as you have a horse. What we will do now is we will try to win the first fight. We are playing on expert, so I'm expected to lose the first battle. I think we must reload. That's exactly what we'll do. Oh. Always remember, shield is your friend. Keep the shield up and always try to keep the shield high to protect your face. You'll take damage to the legs, yes, but if they hit your legs, you're bounded. If they hit your head, you are in real trouble. So. Starting quest, we are not interested. Talk, yes, yes, why, why, I'm interested, okay, okay, okay. This quest exists in nearly every mod. Now, very important things first. Deserters, I'll show you some fighting skills against them. First, we save. And then we'll go there and look for equipment. The little equipment guide. First of all, we look what we have. We have a shield, we have a sword, we have a crossbow. Very good. We have very little starting money and we have a fish. So, what weapons are we looking for? First of all, we're looking, is there a very cheap weapon that allows us to um, knock the enemy unconscious? Because then we can sell him. No, we have nothing like that in for sale. Okay. Next thing we look, do we have anything that we like that is very cheap? We have a hunting crossbow that does 33 damage. The only other crossbows cannot be used from horseback and everything that cannot be used from horseback is not that interesting for us. So no, there's nothing we're interested in. Armor. You can make find things with uh, very very inexpensive armor always look for the armor class so you see this one is more important than more more um, costly than this one but this one actually has the better armor class so always look for the price you see 22 gold for 3 armor 30 gold for 9 armor. But that's not what we're looking for at the moment. We have a strawback ho saddle horse, that's not the best horse, but horses in most mod are incredibly terrible, expensive. To the goods. If you want to do some trading, remember two very important things. Well, as always, sell the goods uh, 
more expensive or to a higher price then you buy them and second you get low uh, you get slower on the map if your inventory here is full unless you have many horses with you so try not to have too many items here with you and furthermore if you sell let's say you've bought this ale for 50 gold you so you sell the ale here to the city the first ale to 73rd 73 the next will be 70 the next will be 68 and so it goes down so don't have too many of one kind with you except you find that they are massively massively cheap to buy different kinds of food are only important if you have a big army and then remember look at the bonus they give to your moral for example bread plus eight fish plus four so we take the bread and we combine that with well we will not combine it with any kind of food because food gets bad very fast as well as pork grapes grain cabbages and bread will always stay the same condition try to keep food that is not getting bagged by the time to the tavern you can look around here you can recruit mercenaries if you like I recommend not to recruit any mercenaries at all why because they're massively more expensive than normal troops that you train by yourself that you get from the villages and furthermore in the beginning don't take an army with you because they're expensive they'll eat your house from your head if you do not have the businesses to keep them up and the ways to keep them fed and furthermore they take your experience if they kill the guys and don't you kill the guys you will get very fewer experience than you will get when you kill them yourself the arena always go to the arena in the beginning you will lose 99 percent of the fights well if not 100 but you learn something about it every way you do we have a bow now that's wonderful So, we killed two of the guys. We got eight experience. That's okay. The game is a little bit slow at the moment. I think that's because I'm um, loading and saving. Always remember, 10 experience and 12 experience. You see, we're getting somewhere. And it costs us nothing. We're not even getting weaker as they're doing only doing unconstitutional damage so that's just wonderful and you can train your ass off there's nothing better than this if you have the choice always oh. if you have the choice always try to keep your distance from the enemy if you have the better ranged weapon So, a two-handed weapon is a wonderful weapon in sieges. If you're doing siege stuff, the two-handed weapon is your friend. I do not recommend to wear two-handed weapons as standard weapons because if you're attacked by thieves in the towns, in the villages, what, I don't care, wherever you're attacked by them, the two-handed weapon will let you down because you will not have the ability to block the incoming arrows that will fly at you or the knives or whatever pole arms pole arms are not my favorite they are very hard to master in my opinion but they are come in handy not only because oh that's much faster than we are um, not only because you will need them in some special quests to uh, take down rebelling um, villages or to train villagers, but they're also important if you do justing. And justing, well, the lance type is a very important. So, he, he hits, we block. 
He hits, we block. He hits, we block. And the moment he takes to recover... Always remember your shield deter deteriorates when it is hit. You see, our shield is nearly down. If he had hit us the shield another time, we would be dead. Well, unconscious. So, so much for the town. What else is there to know? Our inventory, we know that. Always, you can roll back your mouse wheel and so you can see everything from up here. Every territory in every mod has his own spawn, type of spawns. For example, in this uh, uh, normal mod, in this uh, native or florist mod, here are looters, mainly. Here are um, wood bandits. There are vikings. There are some riding enemies, and so on. You'll find that out in every mod quite quickly. So... We'll save that, and now I show you some fighting tricks. First of all, try to fight alone in the beginning. Why? Because you get more experience and more fame, more renown. You see, we get now seven renown for this battle if we win. If we were fighting, well, with an army of 200, we will get no renown and if we're fighting with an un army of 20 we're getting about well 12 renown I think uh, uh, one renown so furthermore always remember the following circle the enemy if the enemy has bowmen or any kind of ranged attackers ride around them until they have no ammunition don't try to make any funny stuff you do not want to charge people that are using bows or crossbows. If they hit you to the head, the damage from the speed of the arrow and your speed while you're riding against them is combined and this results in a terrible amount of damage, believe me. So, we're just riding around them. Be careful when you think you can outsmart them. I've seen people saying, oh, he takes time to reload, just charge when he's reloading. And then he is able to re reload a little bit faster than you inspected, and you get a bolt right into your face just when you, try, when you thought he was reloading and you were trying to charge him. Always keep moving, always keep encycling. This encycling tactics works on every enemy that is on foot and is using ranged weapons. May they be bows, may they be crossbows, may they be axes, may they be uh, thrown weapons of any kind. This works every time. If you can, try to have a spare shield in your chest. If you can, try to have a spear, bolts and arrows in your chest. Because you can always ride back to your chest, where you start on the battlefield, and um, reload. Take more arrows and more things from your uh, chest. So, we're riding around them for a while. Big distance, guys. Very important. If you are too near to them, they hit you far more easy. And if you hit your horse, you're as good as dead. The moment you're on your own, on foot, you're dead. Even against the suckers here. Not mentioning any strong enemies. Not try to do what I do at the moment. Not try to ride up or by a mountain when you're under fire, when you're encircling the enemy. Because you get slower and then they hit you more easily. And that's exactly not what we want. We want them to expand their money. We want to ride around them. Let's guess. Let's see the situation. There's a mountain. And we do not want to have the mountain against us. Not riding up the mountain while we are shot. What can we do? We know we must encycle the enemy. We do a maneuver. A maneuver. We turn on the spot. And you see. We are encycling in the opposite direction. We are moving target. We are very, very hard to hit. 
and we have no hill against us. We're now getting a little bit too near to them in my opinion, but that'll have to do. So, when do I know that the enemy has no weapons left? Well, when we take a quick look at the enemy, I think one of them is still shooting. You can hear they're shooting. Yeah. See, these guys here are still reloading. This guy there, reloading. Quick turn. So. How do I notice they have no ammunition left? Well, first of all, the sound of the crossbow is missing. There is no more shooting at you. And if you are not sure, try to encircle them a little bit closer. That sometimes encourages them to use their ranged weapons at you. When the enemy is out of bolts, you hear normally when you are a little bit closer the sound of a drawing sword. That's the moment they put down their crossbows and go ready for melee combat. Also, they are not longer standing and they are moving around. Like this guy here. See? He has his crossbow on his back. Let's go a little bit closer and get sure nobody has any more weapons, uh, ranged weapons at his disposal. I think they are all auto out of that. So very, very good for us. Good thing, good thing, good thing. I think she, he still may have. Oh yeah. So, now we're sure. The problem now is this ga guys have really big shields. What can we do? We can try to ruin their shields. How do we do that? Well, that was a good shot. I aimed for the upper a little bit over the shield and then you can hit the head. That does not work all times. You must be very careful with this trick. Sometimes you just shoot over the whole group and sometimes you just heal the shield, hit the shield. We're not that funny now. So. You can ruin shields the following ways. You can just try to shoot them to bits. That's one possible way. And you can try to make them lower their shields. This does not work with crossbows, but it works with bows. I will show that later on. So, the game is a little bit... No, they're blocking. The problem is we have no lance. Oh, he blocked it again. And a good hit. When you do headshots, you get more skill bonus. That's very important. The crossbow is a good weapon because you can aim. You can take your time to aim. So. The enemy will let down his shield when he gets closer to you. This is an opportunity to shoot him, but it's also dangerous. Why? Because... Some of them have, have weapons, melee weapons, with a very, very good range. And that will enable them to pike your horse. It's not the problem that they pike you. You can take a pike or two, but your horse... Oh, the block did, you see? Now he's taking down his shield, because he's thinking he can make... And then you can just take him down. So, very good. The enemy has a moral. 
Once you kill enough of them without getting hit yourself, they will start to run away. That is a very good thing. So, if you have spare bow uh, uh, bolts that I have not, you can try and train this on every enemy that has no ranged weapons and no horses. As long as the enemy has no ranged weapons and no horses, you are a f lucky guy, because then you have all the time in the world. Just keep your distance from the enemy and you will be able to deal with them accordingly. Oh, that was dumb even by my standards. Oh, he nearly hit the horse. Oh, I'm not in. I'm not in perfect condition at the moment. What is this? Why am I missing suddenly? The game is very, 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 very laggy at the moment. Good one. So. Two of them may try to flee, but always think they can be um, just uh, looking that way. Sometimes they run a, bit, a little bit away and when you get closer they turn and try to hit you. Then they're trying to trick you. This one is actually not. So, we took them all down by ourselves. Tactics as in cycling the enemy, riding, holding, shooting, riding, holding, shooting, riding, holding, shooting. Don't shoot while you move. Take the enemy, aim, fire, ride and reload. Hold, aim, fire, move and reload. Always do this in that order. Don't shoot when you're riding because you'll do lesser damage and you'll hit um, fewer times. And as long as you keep to these simple rules, you will win the battles against non-horse riding opponents. No matter if they are wearing leather armor, no armor, blade armor, as long as they have no horse and no ranged weapons, you're king. When they have ranged weapons and no horse, just encycle them until they have no ammunition left. Then they are what? Yes. Arm, uh, enemies without horse and without ranged weapons. That's the simple trick. We take the loot. The hunting crossbow is the same we have. So. And guess what? We leveled up. Isn't that wonderful? When we leveled up, where to put our points? I prefer to put mine points in the beginning of the game in intelligence. Because we do not need charisma at the beginning. We have no army to feed and no army to build up. But we need more points um, to survive the battles. We must make more, take more power draw as um, there are some enemies that need to be killed with bows. Later on you see why. So, now we run back to Parven. Go to the marketplace and sell the stuff we do not need. Always look if you found a better armor than you already have. We have not. The bolts will come in very handy. Always have a set of spare bolts, if not two of them, in reserve in your chest. They will come in very handy later on. What else can we use? A cheap bow is always a good combination for us. We do not have cheap arrows at the moment, but well, that will come later on. A lance would be great, but we cannot pay that at the moment. And, well, 
more we do not need actually at the moment. Looters, 10 of them. If you're up against targets that are mainly weaker then you you can use the bow as you have a higher rate of fire and you can use a special tactic with the bow. I can try to show you that on the looters. They have no shield but the principle I can show you. This is not a good terrain to fight on with our tactics as you see it's very hilly and we do not like hilly terrains. Always keep on moving. A horse is your best friend. We need a terrain that is not hilly for starters. Not a hit. Oh. So. They are throwing stones at us. Stones are not that bad weapons. When you have no head armor, oh, I missed that, terrible. If you have no head armor, that could be very dangerous. Try to aim for the head. Now let's think we run out of ammunition. Bad thing. What can we do? We ride back to our chest. ASAP. How do we find our chest? Good question. That's not that easy in most times, except especially if, if you have not a very good orientation sense. But you can watch out for your flag. You can look at the corner of the maps, for example. The map is the point, the map edge, right along the map edge and watch out for your flag. Sometimes you have a little idea where that can be. I thought I have, but as, as you see, I lost mine too. So let's ride around and fight it. We're looking for our flag. That's the reason to pick a flag that is easily recognized. <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah, throw whatever you like. We must find our chest. Must be here somewhere. Yeah, I was talking about chest finding and not, a, not even being able to find my own chest. I was asked when it's time to get an army. It's time to get an army when you have all your heroes. Heroes are expensive. They take a lot of money to recruit in nearly every mod. Uh, but they're worth it. Not because they are incredibly good fighters, in most cases they're not. It's not their main order to kill people. Their main order is to bring skills to your army. To enable your army to work better, harder. Some of them... <laughs> so... I think we ride a little bit in that direction and we always keep our eyes open for our flag. Watch out for the flag. I don't think I've taken a very good flag pole color because if I had we would be far more easy to find. So, so first try to get money and a lot of it and training fight for yourselves this is a bit dangerous but you cannot die you can be just knocked unconscious and then the enemy takes parts of your belongings and they do not do this automatically they do this by a chance so there is the possibility that you do not even uh, lose anything instead of ti uh, um, besides time 
if you have made your own money, if you have won your own battles, if you leveled up, I think, about level 10 to 15 by yourself, it's time to pick up heroes. Look on the wiki pages what kinds of heroes are corresponding with good with another. The heroes don't like each other. They like some of them and they dislike others. If there are too many in their army that they do not like, they just run away with all the stuff and all the stuff you gave them. And that's simply not okay. That's bad. So, when you have your heroes all together and you have trained them, and now comes the most important part, try to make them trainers themselves because they can give their knowledge to your troops. This will enable you to rise armies faster and to compensate losses more quickly. Do you believe this? I do not find my flag. Okay, so let's do what I said. Let's ride around the map edges and look for our map. Uh, look for our chest. So. There's the map edge. There it is not. Is it possible that I lost orientation horribly well no matter then if you make your army running if you're starting to recruit look on the corresponding wiki sites what kind of army you want to have what units you like what units you want to train I recommend mounted units with lances or if that's not available or if you prefer another playstyle like I actually do uh, take ranged units crossbows siege crossbows if possible normal bows are fine they do good damage yes yes I know but they're not able to crack armor and they are not able to kill the guys that make you feel bad for example a looter like the guys running behind us can be killed with a bow army quite easily yes and far more quick and far far quicker than with an army of siege crossbowmen but the same army with bows will be not will not be able to overcome an enemy that is wearing plate armor the arrows will just bounce off and you'll do no damage to them at all they're still behind us and I still have no idea where my chest is must be here somewhere. Um, well, let's look around further. Always think, don't build your army on weak targets. Build your army that they can beat the guys you do not like. The heavy arm armored, 200 swords wielding monsters on horses, for example. That is the enemy you must have in mind. The other enemies are just meat, ready to be pounded into oblivion. They're not your problem. Think of the enemies that you want to destroy that may that making the game that are making the game hard for you. Where is my chest? Must be there soon. There's the corner of the map. By pressing the shift button, you can zoom in on the direction you're actually looking like this. Let's have a very good look at the situation. I do not see a chest. No chest. Let's get up the hill. I bet while watching the videos you have seen me riding by the chest about three or nine times. 
and just lost love your ass off because I was too blind to see it. Damn it, I want to show you a second tactic. Wait a minute. No, that's just a dead guy. No chest. The chest is normally not that far away from the map edge. This is just a dead guy lying around. I'm pretty sure it's somewhere here. I'm really pretty sure. But it is not. Well, I do not want to get boring to you, so I will just knock the guys over and then we'll continue. So, welcome back. We have uh, captured a looter. I, my horse was a little bit bounded, but okay. If your horse is killed in, on the battlefield, there is the possibility that you lose the horse in the complete game. So then you'll have to buy a new horse. And that's quite bad. These are better than ours. So we sell them. The armor is not better than the one we're wearing. So to hell with that. So, let's ride to another town, let's ride to Suno. If you want to do trading, take your time and write down the price of the goods, so that you get a feeling for what, what costs, what is cheap, what is expensive, and so on. So. Any cheap things here? No, not really. Spiked mace, but too expensive for us. Armor. Sometimes you can make... You see? 74 gold for plus 17 armor class. That's just hilariously good. So we buy that. Horses are as always too expensive for us. Most important thing in horses is their armor class. That keeps the horse alive and along, as long as the horse is alive, you are alive. Second is the speed. The more speedy, the less they will get shot. Maneuverability is, well, not the important, most important part. And charging is nice, but not recommended. Uh, not entirely necessary. When you go to a tavern, first thing you do... Shields up, weapons up. Why? Because sometimes they are drunk and then they are attacked and then you take too long to <gasps> I need my weapon, I need my weapon, oh my god, I need my weapon. Bad thing. Weapon and shield. Always on when you go somewhere. So, now we can sell our prisoner. That's just what we'll do. And... Let's go to the marketplace again. They have no arrows. Well, they have 
bent barbed arrows. They are okay for us. A little bit expensive. You can find arrows quite easily. The problem is when you go somewhere you can find arrows. You normally find guys shooting the arrows at you that are not very good to oppose. What I like to have is a lance. But they do not have lances at reasonable prices. So we just ride off to Uxenhall. There's one th more thing I want to show you. What are these? Deserters of what kind? Men at arms. Here, I can show you one more thing before we all go down. So, these are men at arms. I think they have horses. They normally have. I will lose this battle. I have no chance against so many men at arms. But I want to show you something. When you're up against people with horses, do not try to ride directly against them as they will lance you down. Try to circle around them in very, very short circles. And don't try to hit the guys on on the horses. That's absolutely not necessary hit the horses because the moment you kill the horse the guy on the horse is just a guy without a horse and in big trouble and always try to keep the circle as close as possible because this will keep the enemy from getting any uh, movement bonus to his um, damage potential. And always keep your shield up. These are too many, of course. I cannot win this. I will make a mistake sooner or later and then we'll lose our horse and then we'll lose our life or we'll lose our life and then we'll lose our horse. Well, we just don't care for the... For the uh, number this occurs but you know what I mean yep we're hit we're not deadly hit but we're hit I was not putting up my shield correctly I did not follow my own orders through the letter but anyway this is just demonstration just wanted to show you how to fight horses you fight horses a very simple way you want them to get off the horses and when they're off the horses then you simply fight them as foot troopers always try to keep them from gaining their speed the speed is their friend and your enemy I want to show you just one horse to get down before I get down. I hope I can manage this. The game is very lakey at the moment. I'm sorry for that. Well, some of the horses should go down soon. Okay. They're getting a little bit too much. Oh, I was lanced. Okay. I ruined that one. Well, that was the tricks I was able to show you. I know I lost the last battle, but I think you have seen what I wanted to show you. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, just write them to me and I'll try to answer them. And Until then, bye.